How did the Outer Banks get the nickname the Graveyard of the Atlantic? Today, we are going to show you around a really interesting museum in the Outer Banks that answers that question. First, some background information. The Outer Banks are barrier islands, which are a type of dune system that rise out of the water. These dunes are not permanent land structures, they are moving. One of the attractions we enjoy on the Outer Banks is Jockey's Ridge, which is the largest sand dune on the east coast of the United States. The height of that sand dune varies between 80 and 110 feet above water depending on the wind. In the same way that the dune gets moved around by the wind, the islands themselves are being moved by the wind and the waves and the storms. You can see proof of the movement too. In this clip from our Wild Horse Safari video, we are riding in the back of a four-wheel drive vehicle and we pass all these tree stumps on the beach. Those stumps are the remains of an ancient maritime forest which long ago marked the western edge of the Outer Banks. They're now along the eastern edge. In fact, a park ranger on the Outer Banks once told us that at some point in the next 300 years, the barrier islands will eventually meet the mainland. They're taking steps to slow that process down, but it will be impossible to stop. So what's dangerous about all this is that these barrier islands are the sand dunes that rise up above the water. But there are a lot of underwater dunes, also known as shoals, that have made it very difficult for ships to navigate through the waters around the Outer Banks. So difficult, in fact, that there have been more than 2,000 shipwrecks off the Outer Banks of North Carolina since the 16th century. And some estimate the number could be a lot closer to 5,000 shipwrecks. Ships get stuck in the shoals and can be battered by the wind and waves. The shipwrecks have become more rare as ships tend to avoid the area now, but they still happen occasionally. The most recent one that we've heard of wrecked on Coquina Beach near Nags Head in the spring of 2020. There are thousands of ships sunk to their permanent resting place under the water around the Outer Banks. Scuba divers can check out a number of these wrecks if they know where to look. The Graveyard of the Atlantic Museum tells the story of these ships as well as the tourism, fishing industry, pirates, and wars that brought these ships to the Outer Banks. As you head toward the museum located near the southern tip of Hatteras Island, you will immediately notice the unique architecture. The outside of the building is shaped somewhat like the hull of a ship using lumber and a ship's curves to bring to mind the boats that we'll learn about inside the museum. This museum has free admission, but donations to help cover the costs are appreciated. Right as you enter, you will see the 1854 Fresno lens from the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, which was used to protect ships in one of the most dangerous stretches of the sea. The exhibit tells the story of how this lens was missing for over a century until it was finally found in 2002. There's a nearby photo room that features underwater pictures of some of the various well-known wrecks in the area. This is an exhibit about two ships that were sunk outside the Outer Banks on purpose. It tells the story of General Billy Mitchell, who's considered the father of the U.S. Air Force. He couldn't convince other military leaders that bomber planes could actually sink battleships. So they finally agreed to a weapons test to give General Mitchell a chance to prove his hypothesis right. As part of that weapons test, Mitchell sent planes up to bomb the USS New Jersey and the USS Virginia just outside of the Outer Banks of North Carolina. The tests were successful and both ships sunk within an hour of the bombing. There were exhibits about a number of the ships that sank off the coast of the Outer Banks, such as this one about the Carol A. Deering, also called the Ghost Ship of Diamond Shoals. The ship was found wrecked on the shoals, though none of its crew were ever found alive or otherwise. There are a number of artifacts from that shipwreck on display. One of the most interesting displays to me was this one about the sinking of the Titanic. Of course, that happened nowhere near the Outer Banks, but the Hatteras Weather Station was one of the earliest locations to receive and act on the distress signal from the Titanic after it hit the iceberg and began sinking. The message began with the letters CQD, which was a common distress call in use before SOS. It went on to say that the Titanic had struck an iceberg and to give the coordinates of the Titanic's position. 
the Hatteras Weather Station immediately relayed this message to the national office in New York, where, unfortunately, it was ignored. The New York office didn't believe there was any way the unsinkable Titanic could actually be in danger. The original log page where the message was relayed was recently found and is on display at this museum. Along with various articles about the Titanic, they had sheet music written in honor of the Titanic, books written about the Titanic, and even a few somewhat offensive souvenirs inspired by the sinking of the Titanic, such as a Titanic board game, Titanic and iceberg ice cube trays, lifesavers themed to the Titanic from a Titanic exhibition in the 90s, and Titanic soap, which was guaranteed to sink. We have a lot more to show you at this museum in a moment, but first, if you're enjoying our tour, please click the thumbs up button to give us a like, and also, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to be alerted the next time we share our travels with you. We have a whole playlist dedicated to the Outer Banks that you can check out, as well as videos reviewing our experiences at theme parks, beaches, mountains, and resorts. We would love to have you join us along the way. Back to the museum. There's also an extensive exhibit about the naval warfare off the Outer Banks. During World War I, several German submarines sunk a number of vessels to the bottom of the sea around the Outer Banks. Four German submarines also ended up sunk in the Outer Banks by the time the war was over. There's also an exhibit about the Battle of the Ironclads, a famous naval battle that took place in the Civil War. The North and South each had ships that had been plated with iron armor that fired at each other for over four hours off the coast of Virginia. The armor protected both ships, and neither ship was very badly damaged. Unfortunately, the North's ship, the Monitor, sank in bad weather later that year right off Cape Hatteras in the Outer Banks, which is why there's an exhibit about the ironclads included in this museum. The museum also has interesting exhibits on the topic of sailing in the Outer Banks as it relates to tourism, the fishing industry, the history of scuba diving, life-saving techniques used to rescue people from shipwrecks, and Jack's favorite, a lengthy exhibit about pirates, but we don't have any footage of the pirate exhibit because there were signs asking visitors to not take pictures or videos of any of the pirate exhibits. It featured a lot of information about Blackbeard, who hid out in the Outer Banks and was eventually killed on Ocracoke, the southernmost island of the Outer Banks. There was also this really neat exhibit about remnants from shipwrecks that had washed up on the islands, such as pottery, furniture, a Bible, a sewing machine, and in 2006, thousands of bags of Doritos. A nor'easter caused a ship to lose four tractor trailer sized containers, one of which was full of Doritos, many of which washed up onto the beaches of the Outer Banks one bag at a time. Like all good museums, this one ends in a gift shop where there are books about the shipwrecks and the lighthouses of the Outer Banks, as well as t-shirts, toys, and Christmas ornaments related to the area and its history. You could easily spend a couple of hours in this museum seeing everything and reading the details of the history. There are a few interactive exhibits and a film room that shows a brief introductory film as well. This was all well worth seeing, especially if you enjoy museums or are just interested in the deadly history of the waters of the Outer Banks. Right across the parking lot is a public beach area. We walked over there to watch people kiteboarding after we were done in the museum. It looked like a lot of fun. Check out the links at the end of this video. One is a recent video about our top 10 favorite things to do in the Outer Banks, and the other is a new playlist about some beach resort towns we love in South Carolina. This one features some of our videos, as well as a few from other channels we watch. This list will give you a lot of good ideas when planning a South Carolina vacation. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. And we'll see you the next time we're traveling through. Thank you.